Welcome to the introductory course to scripting in Operation Flashpoint. If you are creating missions and or add-ons, then this series is for you. In 7 videos I'll walk you through the basics. I assume that you are already familiar with the game and what it offers and have used the mission editor before. This won't be a tutorial on how to create missions, but how to use scripting in order to enhance them. Open the mission editor and insert a unit. In the initialization field write hint quote hello world and preview. A message is displayed on the screen. Go back and change it to 0, set overcast 0. Weather has changed. Write remove all weapons this. Your gun is gone. Add a semicolon and this add magazine quote M60. You have machine gun rounds in your inventory. Add another semicolon and this add weapon quote M60. Now you have a machine gun in your hands. Add another unit and in its init field write this set behavior quote save. He has his gun on his back. Replace it with this set unit pause quote down and he will lie on the ground instead. As you can see, scripting is writing in the game's internal language in order to modify its state. Ultimately, it is used to create custom events in a scenario. Script, or code, is composed of instructions, commands, like the ones we've just used. In order to work, they need to be written in places where the game is parsing user input, like initialization fields. Most of the commands need information fed to them. This is called passing arguments. Depending on the command, arguments are written on its left or right side or both. They must be of a specific kind, called data type. In Operation Flashpoint there are seven data types. Number. These are real numbers. Boolean, logical values. String, text denoted by quotation marks. Object, identificators for objects. Group, identificators for teams of soldiers. Side, objects affiliation. All these types are called scalars. They represent a single value. There is one more type, a non-scalar called array a list of items. It may hold all the data types, including other arrays. I'll talk more about them in the future. Data passed to the command must match the required type. For example, the hint command uses a string, text that will be displayed. Set overcast needs two numbers. Transition duration in seconds and a level of overcast from 0 to 1. Add weapon requires an object to which the weapon will be given and a string, weapon name. Keyword this refers to the unit you're currently editing. Player refers to the unit you're controlling. If the command name you've entered is incorrect or data type is incorrect, then the code won't work and the game will display an error message. Commands are separated by semicolon, so a single line may carry multiple instructions. This video series won't cover every single command because there are way too many of them. 
Instead, I recommend you browse the command reference to learn about them. Check their requirements and effects. You'll find links in the video description. To finish, I'm going to briefly categorize commands so it might be easier for you to comprehend different areas of the game they relate to. Commands that apply to objects include creating, moving, destroying them, giving orders to soldiers, changing their equipment, and so on. Interface displaying messages, dialogues, map animations, and markers. Audio playing sounds and music. Mathematics arithmetic operators, trigonometry, logic. Camera creating cutscenes. Program flow – commands that affect the scripts themselves. We'll talk more about them in part 5. Variables – commands related to variables. The latter will be introduced in part 3. And left out are commands about mission and game in general. Game speed, time, weather, saving, etc. This concludes the first part. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.